If you walked through the vast grasslands of the great American plains today, you would hear the wind blowing through the tall grasses. You may hear the barking of a tiny prairie dog standing watch near its burrow, or hear the sound of bison grazing on the lush grasses of the plains. Many hundreds of years ago, these would not have been the only sounds you would have heard on the Great Plains. You see, these vast grasslands were once home to the first Americans, the Native Americans of the Great Plains. You would have heard the sounds of their voices, their songs, their music, and their lives. Sego Skenango. My name is Digaliwakwa. She sings. Or you can call me Joanne Shenandoah. I'm a Native American Wolf Clan member of the United Nation Iroquois Confederacy. Native Americans have lived on this land for thousands of years. Today I would like to share with you the story of the Native Americans of the Great Plains. One way we've come to know about early Native American culture is through artifacts dug up by archaeologists. Artifacts are things like pottery, jewelry, and tools. By exploring artifacts left behind, we can learn a lot about what life was like for the first American people. You may wonder, how did the first Americans come to live on this land? Well, many scientists believe that thousands of years ago, much of the Northern Hemisphere was covered with huge sheets of ice called glaciers. This was the Ice Age. The cold temperatures caused more and more water to freeze and the level of the oceans dropped. When this happened, a land bridge crossing the sea between Northeast Asia and North America was revealed. Bison, caribou, and other large animals crossed over the bridge and the Asian people who hunted these animals and depended on them to survive followed. The people settled all over North America and formed groups or nations, becoming the first Native Americans. Some of these people settled in the Pacific Northwest. Others settled in the woodlands of the Northeast region of America. Still others settled in deserts of the Southwest. And some people made their homes on the prairie land in the middle of the United States. We call the first people who settled on the land between the Mississippi River and the Rocky Mountains and from Canada down to Mexico, the Native Americans of the Great Plains. The Great Plains consist of vast grasslands sweeping valleys, rolling hills, and freshwater streams. Few trees grow in the Great Plains, so there is little shelter from the scorching sun. The plains can be bitterly cold in the winter and very hot in the summer. Some nations that settled on the plains are the Pro, Blackfoot, Comanche, and Lakota. Cultures varied among these tribes, but they shared one common bond. They all survived off the herds of the buffalo that roamed the land. The Great Plains people were nomadic, meaning they moved from place to place. They were constantly moving because the buffalo herds were constantly moving, and they depended on the buffalo to survive. Since the Plains people moved around so much, their homes had to be easy to take down, carry around, and easy to build as well. So families lived in teepees. Teepees were made of buffalo hides and poles, very light materials. They were easily taken apart, carried, and then set up again. Teepees were made by tying long branches together and then stretching buffalo hides across them. Teepees are like large tents, Teepee doors were round, and they always faced east toward the rising sun. People lived comfortably inside teepees. The buffalo skins were durable against the harsh wind and weather of the prairie. The skins kept teepees warm during the winter and cool during the summer. The outside of a teepee was decorated with paintings. 
Each painting was unique and showed the personalities of the family inside. In the middle of every teepee was a fire pit surrounded by stones. The fire was used to keep the teepee warm and was used for cooking. There was a hole at the top point of the teepee. The hole allowed smoke from the fire to escape. One family called each teepee home. They slept on robes made of furry buffalo hides. There was also room to store baskets, extra clothes, and dried food. Members of the same clan lived in a village. Villages were small. This way, it was easier to pack up and move everyone and their belongings across the Great Plains. The people of the Great Plains relied greatly on the buffalo for food, shelter, and clothing. Men would leave their villages and go on mass buffalo hunts. They only killed what they needed and didn't waste any part of the buffalo. Men used bow and arrows to hunt buffalo and other animals, like antelope, deer, elk, and moose. They also caught prairie dogs and rabbits in traps. Their meat was used for food. They roasted fresh meat on a stick over a fire or boiled it with vegetables to make stew. Some meat was cut into strips and dried with smoke from a fire. Great Plains tribes mostly ate meat. However, women would go into the fields and pick herbs and other plants that grew wild on the prairie. These were used as food too. Fresh food wasn't always plentiful. Winter weather on the plains could be harsh and cold and sometimes food was scarce. So the nations preserved meat and plants by drying them. Dried food would last for months and helped many Native Americans survive. Buffalo meat was used for food, but the hides of the buffalo were used to make clothing or teepee coverings. But the hides had to be prepared and softened. Women would skin the buffalo, then stretch the hide across the ground with stakes. The flesh and hair was scraped off. Then the hide was washed in a stream. Hides were tough and held up against the changing weather on the plains. Buffalo horns were used to make utensils like spoons and bowls and toys for children. Bones were used to make strong weapons and tools. Family unity was important to Native American people who lived on the prairie. Children were never hit for doing something wrong. The worst punishment was to have a bucket of water thrown over your head. Children were taught the ways of the nation from a very young age. Boys learned to ride a horse almost before they could walk. Their grandfathers taught them how to use a bow and arrow so they would grow up to become great buffalo hunters. When a boy grew older, he was allowed to join his father on a buffalo hunt. Men were the providers. They hunted for food and brought it back to their families. Girls were taught how to take care of a family. They learned by helping their mothers and grandmothers cook, make clothes, and take care of their homes. If a girl was a talented cook, she was praised. Women were the homemakers. They were responsible for setting up and taking down the teepees. They fed their families by chopping up buffalo and other meat, gathering wild plants, and cooking meals. Women were skilled artists and made crafts and clothes for the entire village. The oldest members of the nation were sometimes the chiefs. They were considered wise because they had lived so long. Elders used their wisdom to settle conflicts within the nation. Their word was respected. They also passed down their wisdom onto the next generation of children and taught them the Native American way. The Great Plains people made unique artwork, clothes, and had their own spirituality. Members were skilled painters. They crushed wild berries to make paint. Then they painted designs on the buffalo skins that made teepees and clothes. Carving was another art form. Men carved pipes out of wood or stone. Women made clothes out of skins from buffalo, antelope, and deer. Men wore animal skin leggings, a loincloth, and a belt. Some men wore eagle feather war bonnets. 
This meant the man had done good deeds. The more feathers a man wore in his bonnet, the more he was honored by the people. Women wore deerskin dresses. They also decorated themselves with jewelry like earrings and bracelets made out of metal or beads. Children wore the same clothing as their parents. Everyone wore moccasins on their feet. Moccasins were made of buckskin and sewn together by the women. The Great Plains people believed in many spirits. They believed these spirits were all around them and showed themselves in the form of the sun, moon, stars, animals, people, and even rocks. The artwork, the clothing, and the beliefs of the Plains people allow us to peek inside their rich culture and heritage. Native Americans wandered the Great Plains hunting buffalo and living off the land for thousands of years. However, their lives changed forever when the European settlers came to the Great Plains. Soon, the great herds of buffalo were gone, and so too were the teepees. Many Native Americans were killed, and some nations disappeared. All were forced to migrate to reservations, land set aside for Native Americans only. The Native Americans' way of life and culture would be radically changed. It's important to know and understand the fascinating history of the Native American people. It's the story of their past. But it's also important to realize that today, many Native Americans don't live on reservations. They live in towns and cities just like you and their lives are not much different than other Americans. What truly is important is that Native American people preserve their customs, culture, and spirituality, just like other American families preserve the customs and cultures passed down from their parents and grandparents. And even though the lifestyle of today's Native Americans has changed, they know the value of teaching the truth of their ancestors, the first Americans.